NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. And now at 11, tropical storm Erica packs a punch in the Caribbean, leaving dozens dead and destruction in its path. Plus, a decade after Hurricane Katrina battered the Gulf Coast, the process of rebuilding continues. And the stakes are high for Hillary Clinton and the Democratic National Committee meeting today as she tries to make the case that she's the strongest candidate. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ashley Matthews. It's a good idea to keep that umbrella handy as we head into the weekend. Meteorologist Brian Dukes has more on what we can expect with the weather for our Friday. Hi, Brian. Hi, Ashley. Unfortunately, not the best weather out there today. We are tracking some showers that will be moving in later on, and uh, we do have the cool temperatures. Only 64 degrees right now in Madison. The same in both Lone Rock, Prairie du Chien, as well as Baraboo. Now it's a little bit warmer off to the east. There were at least a few peaks of sun there earlier on this morning. Now there is the rain uh, currently across southern Wisconsin. Some drizzle, a few sprinkles, but notice that big yellow blob around Prairie du Chien and westward. That is some light to at times moderate rain that is expected to move in as we head through the afternoon. You can see that all spinning in our direction, and that means we are in for at least uh, some scattered showers as we head through today. Look for high temperatures into the lower 70s by this evening. The rain, unfortunately, will be with us this evening, and that means it could be wet for your Friday night football games. I'll have more on that in a big warm-up. That's all coming up in a few minutes. Ashley? Sounds good, Brian. Thank you. The weather is making news elsewhere. Heavy rain from Tropical Storm Erica has caused devastation on the tiny Caribbean island of Dominica, leaving around two dozen dead. NBC's Janet Chamblin reports from San Juan, Puerto Rico. It's been a devastating 24 hours for the tiny island nation of Dominica. Local media now reporting as many as 25 people are dead after Tropical Storm Erica triggered flooding and mudslides that washed away homes and businesses, collapsed a building. Searchers right now can't even reach some of the hardest hit areas. As this storm becomes more disorganized and moves west, the Virgin Islands and here in Puerto Rico are now getting rain, primarily here in Puerto Rico on the southern side of the island. In preparation, stores and businesses have closed their doors as tropical storm Erica continues to churn through this area. Janet Chamlian, NBC News, San Juan, Puerto Rico. It's been 10 years since Hurricane Katrina forever changed the city of New Orleans. More than 1,800 people lost their lives in the storm, and the rebuilding process is far from over. Today, former President George W. Bush and his wife, Laura, are visiting the city. This morning, they visited a local high school, the same school they visited on the first anniversary of the storm. The school's library was able to rebuild its collection thanks in part to the Laura Bush Foundation for American Libraries. Now, later today, the Bushes will be in Gulfport, Mississippi for an event honoring first responders. Former President Bill Clinton is expected to visit New Orleans tomorrow, and President Obama was just there yesterday. Ryan Nobles takes a look at how far the city has come. Katrina, Rita, Ike, Gustav, the National Recession, the BP oil spill. And we're still standing. We are still standing. New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu wants the world to know his city's comeback story. Over the last 10 years, the city of New Orleans has literally been to hell and back. A testament to the city's resiliency after one of the worst disasters in U.S. history. On August 29, 2005, Hurricane Katrina slammed into the Gulf Coast as a Category 3 storm. Katrina left a field of destruction across four states, with New Orleans bearing the brunt. You can see where this levee broke. The storm breached levees, flooding most of the city. A decade later, signs of rebuilding. But despite a resurgence of business, tourism, and culture, the tedious work of recovery remains unfinished, especially in poorer communities. <laughs> President Obama visited the city Thursday, touting the tremendous amount of work that's been done since the storm. I'm here to hold up a mirror and say, because of you, the people of New Orleans working together, this city is moving in the right direction. He adds, there is still more work to be done. Our work here won't be done when almost 40% of children still live in poverty in this city. That's not a finished job. That's not a full recovery. And that was Ryan Nobles reporting. In our continuing coverage, Virginia medical officials say a TV news reporter and cameraman who were killed during a live broadcast 
were both shot in the head. Today, the medical examiner's office in Roanoke said WDBJ TV reporter Allison Parker's official cause of death was gunshot wounds to the head and chest. Cameraman Adam Ward's cause of death was gunshot wounds to the head and torso. Both deaths have been ruled a homicide. They were killed by a former station employee. The medical examiner's office did not specify how many times Parker and Ward were shot during Wednesday's attack. Just hours following that tragic shooting, law enforcement tracked down the gunman using a license plate reader. It's a device that's used in a number of areas in Dane County. Fitchburg police have one car equipped to read passing and parked car licenses. If there is an alert that comes out for a wanted vehicle, a missing person, perhaps someone that's suicidal um, or endangered, we can probe that information in the database. And if we were to encounter that vehicle, we would have an alert pop up on the screen. Madison PD's parking enforcement unit, Middleton, Sun Prairie, as well as the Verona Police Departments also have at least one car with a license plate reader. In our Decision 2016 coverage, Governor Scott Walker will lay out his foreign policy agenda today at a speech in South Carolina. He says the U.S. would aggressively confront what he describes as radical Islamic terrorism if he's elected. The governor will speak in just a couple of minutes at the Citadel Military College. Details of the speech released early do not explain whether Walker wants to commit more American ground troops to the Middle East. Democrats are descending on Minneapolis today for the summer meeting of the Democratic National Committee, and stakes are especially high for Hillary Clinton. Secretary Clinton's goal at the meeting to make the case that she's the strongest candidate, but many are waiting for Joe Biden, who's still deciding on whether to run. NBC's Kristen Welker reports. In Minneapolis today, Secretary Clinton's mission is clear. Reassure the party faithful. She can weather the political storm caused by her emails. Her strategy Thursday, go on the offense. Take aim at Republicans. Extreme views about women, we expect that from some of the terrorist groups. We expect that from people who don't want to live in the modern world. But it's a little hard to take coming from Republicans who want to be the president of the United States. Republicans fired back, releasing this statement. For Hillary Clinton to equate her political opponents to terrorists is a new low for her flailing campaign. Meanwhile, some top Democrats say Clinton should more aggressively address nagging questions about her emails. You know, the American people are concerned about this. Even people who love Hillary were concerned about it. Overshadowing it all, the potential candidate who's not here, Vice President Joe Biden still weighing his options. But members of the draft Biden super PAC are here in force. There's 215,000 people who've signed a petition and, and would love to see him. And the folks we've talked to here at the uh, DNC are, are, are excited for it. And that was Kristen Welker reporting. Now, Clinton is still the strongest Democratic candidate, and Biden comes in third place behind Bernie Sanders, suggesting Biden could have an uphill battle if he decides to get in the race. The National Zoo announced the sex of two giant panda cubs born at the zoo. It's a boy. The cubs were born August 22nd. The smaller of the two died on Wednesday. Sad news there. Both cubs are male. No decision has been made as when the surviving cub will be named. The zoo hopes the new cub will make his public debut in January.